Hello again, YouTube friends. Uh, so in the last uh, last video, we looked at um, the framing and the rough plumbing. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, the rough electrical and how we did that. So let's dive into it. So with the plumbing out of the way, uh, rough plumbing anyway, um, I dove into the electrical. Well, we passed the rough plumbing inspection, by the way. Um, they just wanted to see basically that um, the supply lines held pressure and that you could fill the vents, the vent up to the roof and not have water come pouring out anywhere. Um, he probably looked at some other stuff he didn't mention to me, but those were the things he asked me to see. So for the electrical, I wanted a light by the man door. There had been like a couple of spotlights that just shone all over the lawn, but I wanted something that was just kind of there at the door. So I took out the, the one that was over the door and put one in kind of at the corner here and ended up putting it on uh, kind of a neat timer switch. You put in your latitude and longitude and uh, the time and date, and then you can have it um, turn the light on and off relative to sunrise and sunset. Um, and it'll just calculate throughout the year when sunrise and sunset are with a little computer it's got in there. It doesn't need to be on the internet or anything. It can just take care of it. I ended up putting in a couple of those at home too for the porch light and the garage light. We did uh, can lights in the what we call the workroom, the smaller part of the, the building, um, and in the bathroom. Uh, at the time we were buying this stuff, the the full-on LED stuff wasn't really available locally yet. And so what we did is we bought cans that were meant for like an incandescent light and then immediately put retrofit kits in them for LEDs um, without ever putting an incandescent bulb in them. I think now what I see at the store is um, probably a lot easier to put in. It's just um, LED straight from the get-go. And I think it's it's less complicated. You know, it's not designed to handle the heat of an incandescent um, and all of that. We put in a lot of spots for receptacles. Uh, I've never been in a workshop where I said, why are there so many receptacles or why are there so many lights? Oh, yeah, there's that outside light. That shade kind of keeps the light where I want it. Got some of the lights lit, which was nice because we'd mostly been working in the dark, which is kind of a hard way to work. Oh, this is cool. So this is the bathroom closet. And I found out they do like a solid state relay that fits in the octagon box. And so I was able to hook it up so that there's like a roller switch on the door. So when you open the door, closet light turns on, you close the door, closet light turns off. It's like using the fridge, you know. Here's the soffit in the workroom. Um, we ended up, we didn't, we, we put cabinets under it, but we thought we probably didn't want um, upper cabinets in that space. And so we were gonna put pendant lights instead. So that's what I was wiring in here. Oh, there's a vent fan, of course, in the bathroom too. And this is the closet in the garage side where we had planned to put the heating equipment. You can kind of see some of our our job site infrastructure, we had a, a fridge to keep the water cold and the snacks cold and a radio, some place to charge batteries. And that was kind of the extent of our civilization for a long time out there. Ended up with a lot of just tiny little pieces of scrap from different different places. Thankfully, not too many big ones. We were able to use most of the big stuff somewhere. Here's that uh, fancy uh, automatic switch for the outdoor light I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. 
had to spend some time walking around up in the ceiling. Um, so I put a spot hardwired in for like a, a TV to hang on the wall in the workroom. And um, we did a bunch of low voltage stuff in the building, ran uh, coax for cable TV or satellite or whatever. Um, and then I also ran uh, HDMI cable from where I planned to have kind of my radios and stuff over to the TV in case I wanted to show something from a computer or from one of the radios on the television. And then also network cable pretty much everywhere and um, hardwired um, an alarm system too. Ended up, uh, so there's conduit down to where the TV goes for the low voltage stuff. I'm figuring that stuff changes kind of often. And so maybe it'd be good later to be able to pull different kind of wiring in. Um, I also ended up kind of where I'm standing there, um, putting a uh, UHF antenna up in the attic and then just running the wire straight down for the television. Figured I probably wouldn't pay for cable TV at my garage, at least. At least not until I hit it rich. I end up spending more time in the attic than I thought I would. It proved to be an easier way to get cables from one place to another in certain cases where stuff was on the way in the ground. Made some friends, some frog friends. Um, in the garage side of the building, I put in a few 30 amp, um, 240 volt circuits for machine tools, hopefully in the future. Um, those should be able to handle, I think, about a three horsepower motor. Um, I did one circuit for like a five horsepower motor in the corner, thinking that I might put an air compressor. Um, still may, but really the electric tools are getting so much better these days, it's hard to know if it makes sense. I guess if you're going to spray or do certain things that you just can't do without air, you need it. But just for like an impact wrench or an um, air ratchet or something, I'm not sure. I think I think some of the new... Um, cordless electric stuff's just as good, maybe. Lots of receptacles. Like I said, you can't have too many receptacles. Here's that vent fan. Get that hooked up to actually blow air outside. Oh, yeah. So this, uh, like I did for the TV over by where the radio desk is going to be. I put um, conduit for some low voltage stuff. Um, and this actually, so on one side it goes to the radios and on the other side it's in that same closet as the heating equipment. So there's um, kind of a, an option there as you, as you bring a low voltage cable down, do you want to take it into the closet or into the, the radio desk? I put plenty of receptacles at the radio desk. So the uh, conduit on the right hand side is the one that um, also terminates in the closet and then goes up into the attic. The one on the left hand side just goes straight into the attic. That's for antenna cables for ham radio. Put some speakers in the ceiling, thinking it'd be nice to have some music. And, you know, my advice, if you're gonna do something like this and you got the drywall, not in yet, run any kind of wire you can think of because wire is not that expensive. Um, but fussing around trying to run it behind drywall that's already in is sure long work. Here's the where we hardwired in the television. I had to special order that box. Um, it's designed to have separate high voltage and low voltage sides. So on the right hand side, there's a receptacle to plug the TV into. And then on the left-hand side, there's the HDMI, coax, um, and uh, network. And on that side, they give you plenty of room. You can see there's, it's, it's really wide, um, and it's also deep. It goes almost to the 
to the exterior sheathing. So there's plenty of room in there to um, terminate whatever kind of cable you need to and not uh, bend it too tight. Put in, oh man, what do we got here? A couple of switches, um, spot for a thermostat, um, and then also uh, for one of the alarm control panels. I think, oh, so the, the top right's the alarm control panel, top left is a thermostat, um, bottom right's some switches for the lights, and then the bottom left is um, for volume control for the speakers in the ceiling. It's like a multi-tap transformer. Got some of the lights lit up. Uh, yeah, I had wanted to kind of figure out how the um, water heater was going to go before I closed the walls up. Here's where the um, well, the vent for the vent fan goes out, but also there's conduit there on the right hand side for the antenna cables. And they go outside, and there's a big uh, weatherproof box on the outside of the building. Um, where they turn downward and then go out through um, glands, cable glands, uh, to keep the weather out of the building. And then they'll eventually go over to um, an antenna support structure and head up from there. Well, that's the alarm panel. Sorry, that guy's kind of backlit. Got the uh, got the rough electrical approved too. So that's the the end of the rough electrical story. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, that like button. And uh, this is the kind of thing you're into. I got a bunch more on this project. As you can see, we're just just getting underway with it. And I think I think there's going to be about ten videos total. And I'll put put links down below in the description to the previous and next, and I'll put them in a playlist and all that stuff for you. Um, so if it's the kind of thing you're into, please hit the subscribe button because there's more to come. And uh, hit the little bell icon next to there if you like, and you can get email notifications, alerts when I post a new video. And that way you can be the first kid on your block to get over here and uh, leave a comment, which, uh, you know, if you have any questions or if you have any helpful advice for other folks who might be doing something similar, um, really would appreciate to have it in there. I look forward to reading the comments always. Like, like some of the conversations that get going. So, see you soon.